In the last video I introduced the Telstar Video Tech service and I demonstrated how I could connect to it using a BBC Micro with a Prestel adapter, how we might use a Sinclair Spectrum using a Prism modem and we looked at how we might use a Tandata Video Text terminal as well. Now in the background of that video was an Apple II, well in fact this Apple II here. And I've had a couple of comments about how we might use the Apple II to connect to Telstar. Well, to be honest, it was only one comment, but it's enough to make a video all about the Apple II connecting to Telstar. So here we go. OK, in this demonstration, we're going to connect this Apple II to the Telstar Video Tech service. So if you've got an Apple II and you want to relive the excitement of the communications revolution that started a decade before the internet, well, stay tuned. And if you stick around to the end, we'll try and connect through a packet assembler disassembler, uh, a pad, um, sort of simulating the, the X25 protocol of things like TimeNet, Telenet and BT's packet switch stream. OK, so we'll start with a Wi-Fi modem, which tends to be the tradition with these videos. Um, this is a Y modem 232. There are lots of products on the market that can do a similar thing. Um, I'll leave a link to this particular modem in the description below. Okay, so back in the day, there were many applications and many ways to connect to a video tech service. Uh, here in the UK, the service, popular service, of course, was Prestel. Uh, one of them was called AppleTel. This is a brochure for it here. This included additional hardware, things like graphics cards, and it had a special keyboard for editing. However, today we're going to use a product called Antelope. Now, Antelope was originally uh, published by Pace, um, and it was called Data Highway. Well, the guy who wrote it, Ewan Wallop, um, had an arrangement with Pace such that when Pace stopped publishing it, he would be allowed to publish it under his own name. The only thing is he had to change the name of the product, hence the name Antelope. Now, I'll leave a link to his website down below in the description because he's got a few of the packages you might be interested in. So you'll be able to get a copy of Antelope, of course, but there's also a product called Gazelle, and there's other communication software such as Spectrum and so on. So why not take a look? OK, well, in order to kind of um, capture the screen, we've got quite a lot of uh, paraphernalia plugged into the back of this Apple II. And unfortunately, the, the capture is not of great quality. Um, we've got a TV screen here, which seems to do slightly better, although the colours seem to be slightly out on that. So maybe between the two, you'll get a feel for how it does, how it works. Now, there is no special graphics card. Uh, it is purely using the Apple II graphics, and it does a pretty good job, even if the capture doesn't quite show that. With the original Videotech system, it was envisaged that people would use a handheld controller, something with keys 0 to 9, an asterisk, and a hash. Now, when we're using a computer such as the Apple II or any video text terminal, uh, we find that the return key uh, is used as the hash. It makes perfect sense when you're using the system, as you'll see. Uh, the difficulty is that when we're trying to control a modem, so if we want to send AT commands to our modem to perhaps establish a connection, the return key sends a hash, which the modem doesn't like. Now, on this Antelope software, there is a, a key combination, I think it's Control D, that's supposed to send a carriage return to allow you to complete a command with the modem. Um, my particular modem has a Telstar mode, which is quite nice. Uh, which means it will recognise a hash and treat it as a carriage return when you're in command mode on the modem. Anyway, we don't need to worry about that because I have a workaround which will work for all of the modems, as you'll see. OK, so well, let's get cracking. The Antelope floppy disk has been placed in the disk drive and it's in slot 6. This particular Apple II has an IDE hard drive, but we can still boot to the floppy disk and start Antelope. So what we'll do is we'll connect to the modem using the traditional communications terminal, make the connection to Telstar, and then we'll switch over to the video text terminal and then continue from there. We've got this set for 1200 board, 8 bits no parity. So with these settings, we should be able to communicate with the modem. There it is there. And so from this point, we can then make a connection to Glass TTY on port 6502. So if we now restart the software, but this time select the view data or video text mode, we should already be connected to Telstar, and in fact we are. Now this is the main page, um, colours and fonts seem pretty good. If we have a look at the Micronet pages, we can see the colours are slightly out, we've got a green instead of cyan, but in the main it all works pretty well. Well being British, it's probably only right that we have a look at the weather.
Well, I'm here in Skipton and it looks like it's a cloudy day all day. Well, that was pretty straightforward. Uh, and obviously there's a lot more to antelope than we're showing you here. So it's definitely worth checking out. Now, I think the next step would be to connect our modem, a traditional modem that's connected to the telephone network and connect to Telstar in that way. Now, there are a couple of ways to do that. Uh, the first is to call Telstar directly and we'll give that a go. It's fairly straightforward. Um, I think the more interesting method might be to use the Telstar pad, which is kind of trying to emulate an X25 network such as TimeNet, TimeNet Telenet and BT's packet switch stream here in the UK. OK, so now I've removed my Wi-Fi modem and connected a standard dial-up modem. We're running the uh, Antelope View Data software. Um, and in this case, I'm going to use the Control D uh, sequence we talked about earlier to control the modem and make the call. Uh, if that didn't work for you, or if you had a manual modem, then you simply make a phone call, wait for the tone, press the button, and hey, pressed up. Connecting to Telstar from here just simply means we use the standard AT dial command to dial the number. And remembering, of course, to use Control D instead of a carriage return at the end because we're in view data mode. And once we've waited for the system to connect, we can see the welcome page. From here on in, everything is exactly the same as before. So at the risk of repeating myself, let's close this down and have a look at connecting via the Telstar pad. Well, here we are again. We've got our view data software loaded. Our modem is still connected. Uh, but instead of dialing into Telstar directly, what we're going to do now is dial into a Telstar pad. Now, Telstar has several of these packet assembler disassemblers, and these are trying to replicate the nodes that would have existed for BT's packet switch stream back in the day. And in the US, I suppose, TimeNet and Telenet. And this was a network that allowed you to dial a local phone number and make a data call, well, an international data call if you wanted to. OK, so we dial the Telstar pad number this time, um, slightly different number. Uh, this should connect us to the pad, at which point we can enter pad commands, make connections and so on. OK, so uh, here we are connected to the pad. We've got the pad prompt. Um, there are several commands and we'll look at those in detail when we switch to the normal terminal and try it out later on. Um, in the meantime, we'll just type the command hosts um, and we can see a list of, uh, of internal, it's an internal directory really on the pad. Uh, we can call anywhere from here, but this is just an internal directory with a few shortcodes. So if we uh, type call nxtel, we should be able to call the nxtel view data service, which is a service designed for those people with the ZX Spectrum Next. So if we just pause for a minute and think about what's going on here, we are dialed into nxtel, which is a video text service that wasn't designed to be dialed into, and yet here we are using it, using a modem and the public telephone network. Well, that was pretty straightforward. I'm not quite sure what the people from the NXTEL group would think about us connecting to it with an Apple II, but they're a friendly bunch, so I'm sure it'll be fine. So I think the next thing to do is connect using a more traditional terminal. So I'll switch the terminal over and we'll investigate the pad a little bit further. Well, when we connect with the ordinary terminal, we get the pad prompt as we did before. And if we issue the help command, we can see a list of commands that are available to us. I don't particularly want to go into these with great detail, but you can see that we've got a list of hosts. We saw that before with the view data terminal. But we can try a few commands out. If we um, issue the profile command, we can uh, see which profile we're using. Uh, we're using profile P7. P7 represents a connection of uh, seven bits, even parity one stop bit. And if we issue the, the parameters command or the parse command, we can see all the list of parameters associated with that profile many of which can be changed from the command line. OK, we'll just bring the help up again to remind us what we can do. And if we have a look at the profiles command, you'll see the list of profiles that we have. There are two. There are P7, which we're currently using, and P8, should we want to change to that. Now, the profiles are automatically detected based on what um, the connection that you make. So our modem is currently in 7 bits even, because that's how it was set for connecting to Telstar when we dialed directly, um, and of course when we dialed to the pad. So that's what it's detected. OK, reminding ourselves of the hosts on the internal directory. Um, let's, let's try and connect to a bulletin board now. Now we're using the shortcode here straight out of the directory. We could just have easily used call um, apple a80s bbs.com colon whatever port it's on, I can't remember. Um, the list given by the host command is simply a few of my favourites and a few UK based ones. It didn't make much sense to me to put non-UK non BBSs in the list when you're dialing a UK number to get to it. 
As I said, it's not necessary for a system you're trying to connect to to be in that directory list. That's just a short code to make things convenient. You can still connect directly using the full URL. However, if you're a system operator of a system and you would like it to appear in that list, then leave a note in the comments and I'll make sure it gets added. Well, that about wraps it up for this video, except to say thank you for watching. And if you want to see more of this geeky retro nonsense, then hit the thumbs up button. And if you've got any suggestions or comments, pop them in the uh, comments below and I'll, I'll get back to you. Um, in the meantime, I'll leave you with a sequence of pages to whet your appetite and I'll see you next time.